Hi and welcome to a new episode of Apex Race. In this episode we will check out this Jeep Grand Cherokee. We will check out the outside, the inside and then we will go for a quick test drive. Have fun and enjoy! The Jeep Grand Cherokee, initially launched in 1992, swiftly carved out a space for itself in the burgeoning SUV market with its blend of practicality, comfort and off-road capability. Fast forward to 2005, the third generation of this revered model, known as the WH and WK in North America, rolled out, reflecting a complete redesign and heralding a new era for the brand. Built on a fresh platform shared with the Mercedes-Benz M-Class thanks to the Daimler-Chrysler partnership prevailing at the time, the WH-WK generation sought to weave together enhanced stability and on-road dynamics. Produced until 2010, this generation introduced a slew of features and innovations, ensuring the Grand Cherokee not only stayed relevant but also competitive in an ever-expanding SUV market. Embracing a design that considered both urban practicality and adventurous off-roading, the WH-WK was lauded for striking a commendable balance, seamlessly bridging the gap between weekday commutes and weekend escapades. Consequently, it adeptly continued the Grand Cherokee's legacy, preserving its well-regarded name in automotive spheres until making way for its successor, the WK2, in 2010. The Jeep Grand Cherokee WH has been praised for its blend of on-road comfort and off-road prowess. However, like many vehicles, it's had its share of typical issues over the years. One of the more common issues surrounds its transmission, with some models showing symptoms of rough shifting and slipping between gears. Alongside this, there have been sporadic reports of electronic malfunctions, such as flickering dashboard lights, power window issues, and inconsistencies with the key fob and ignition system. Under the hood, engine concerns have cropped up as well, including stalling, rough idling, and aisle leaks. On the topic of leaks, the cooling system hasn't been exempt either. Some owners have pointed out radiator problems leading to overheating. As temperatures rise outside, the internal air conditioning system has been under scrutiny too, with the blower motor or associated electrical components occasionally failing. Moving on to the vehicle's structural components, the front suspension of certain WH models has exhibited premature wear, especially in parts like ball joints and control arms. This wear can lead to alignment concerns and subsequent uneven tighter wear. Fuel system issues, from starting troubles to inconsistent idling due to potential fuel pump or injector malfunctions, have been reported as well. Furthermore, those equipped with the Quadra Drive 2 system occasionally note differential noise. Brake systems haven't been spared either, with premature brake wear prompting some owners to replace brake pads and rotors earlier than anticipated. Lastly, inside the cabin, while the Grand Cherokee WH boasts a comfortable interior, wear and tear have been evident in some units. Owners have mentioned issues like malfunctioning switches, peeling surfaces, and the occasional loose trim piece. Despite these concerns, it's essential to remember that experiences can vary widely, and a well-maintained WH-WK is less likely to exhibit these problems. Regular checkups and professional consultations can go a long way in ensuring the vehicle's longevity and performance. So in the front we see a little bit of like a retro heritage perspective with this roundish headlights and this grill remembers me a little bit at the first Jeeps from the 40s of the last century. The overall side light design is quite simple i would say it's a suv like an estate a little bit higher the only design features i would call them are the like in the arcs here also in the in the back and besides that yeah it's it's quite a big simple us design so in the back things design wise are also quite simple the only design feature uh of course like the taillights a little bit different and then we have like this line here and the rear glass it's not like flat it's in an angle yeah 
The cool feature about that here is that uh, we can of course open the whole bag but on a double click we can only open the window which is uh, quite more convenient if you would like to um, just quickly access something into here, dropping something into here in a quite compact room and not like opening the whole trunk door. Uh, let's check out what's in the in the trunk, how much space we have and we are opening that. That is quite, I don't know if that are original dampers here, but it's it's quite jumping up and we have a lot of space here. Of course the rear seats are folded down now, but we can easily fit in here like a bicycle or two even if you would like. When I'm switching the seats back. Still a lot of space here and what I like personally is that the bed is flat. Which it's not dropping down. Of course we have like here the spare tire below that like a proper all-terrain vehicles have. We have also here all-wheel drive of course it's a Jeep. We have a little bit like of thingies here. We have like a net here. We can store a little bit of things. We have here a 12 volt power outlet. We have some hooks. We have some additional very minimal storage here down below. Um, not so much a lot of space. <laughs> and here is the answer what this Jeep has to do with Mercedes and back in the days Chrysler which is part of you know Jeep is a part of Chrysler and Daimler which is like a part of no well, Mercedes is a part of Daimler back then they have been like one company so and what companies do like exchanging parts to save uh, save money save costs Jeep of course have some V8 engines and stuff like that but uh, maybe in Europe where mileage gas mileage is like important and so they thought okay we will have a diesel engine and Jeep reached out to Mercedes which have a little bit more experience with um, diesel engines so we have down below here we have actually a 3 liter Mercedes-Benz engine diesel engine which is working here also the transmission comes from Mercedes-Benz. So on the back seats in the Grand Cherokee we are sitting a little bit higher than the front passengers. The position is also quite upright and we have a little bit support here in the lower back part. We have a yeah maybe not a lot of but we have some head space. I'm 1 meter 80. Of course driver's seat is on my height and I have a lot of space here for the knees but you see here my legs are not touching the seats so maybe on longer journeys that will be not so comfortable. We have of course power windows, the material it's plastic, nothing special. We have here a little bit of leather with this I think it's something like Alcantara something like that in the middle part we have some uh, cup holders here it's plastic and it's rattling and it's not really nice working and then we have some armrest here actually this armrest is yeah not on the same level this is actually good for me see my arm is a little bit bent so maybe it could be lower but on that part the door armrest is not working so well so I am a little bit twisted into that direction so I have to sink a little bit deeper this is then okay my my knees are like spreading out and uh, I need to sit a little bit lower which of course give me a little bit more headrest so maybe not the most comfortable position for longer journeys in the Grand Cherokee for adults and besides that yeah we have speakers here we have some yeah, pff, storage here not in the door below and also we don't have anything here in the middle console any uh, yeah, we have some ventilation we can steer for the rear passengers but no power outlets no ashtrays or oh, whatever so quite simple 
in the back seats. One funny detail is that actually the right passenger has some pocket here for storage for the passenger but on the left side where the driver sits the passenger doesn't have any pocket so why is that saving money or i don't know <laughs> quite interesting detail so welcome into the cabin of the jeep grand cherokee and i mean we have here the overland edition it's not the highest trim it's like a, a mid trim and we see that especially on the seats it should be lever but i don't think it's lever on the sides and in the middle we have like this alcantara thing is here we have of course power windows power mirrors heated mirrors we have uh, air conditioning we have like this quite advanced radio system so it's a little bit loaded but not too much loaded of course like this fake plastic wood trim here memory power seats it's a very very clean design i have to say very structured like a few buttons a few weird buttons more onto that but overall a very clean design also the, like the dashboard classic gauges here if you look some for something you will instantly find that we have of course like this uh, sunroof here which is also quite nice and of course power like electric powered the materials um yeah you know you think you should at the first look you should think it's like leather but no it's like not really leather we have like the stitches here and also only like on the middle part here and also above the gauges but that is uh hard plastic but hey overall like uh, it ages like 20 years now and it doesn't have any cracks or whatever so that is quite good of course like overall hard plastic here in the lower part hard plastic but on the on the upper parts we have like this fake lever that is a like a little bit it's plastic but also a little bit cushioned so that is okay and i have to say like for <clears throat> 20 years and 204,000 kilometers it looks okay of course we have some wear and tear here on the steering wheel and on the driver's side but overall i would not say that that car has this mileage and this this age so quite good we have like this boston premium auto sound system never heard of it maybe you so let me know in what position this boston premium audio is is it like bose or uh, not <laughs> let's start on the left side we have of course the power mirrors and the power windows blockade for the power mirrors for the back seats for the children then we have a manual locks a man me mechanism then we have of course the power windows and heated ones left right down below we have the memory seats for the power seats and then the speaker and a little bit of storage department it doesn't feel so nice when you're touching down there but it's like quite hard plastic then on the left side we have also some additional storage department for maybe you know your wallet or i don't know maybe keys or something like that then some ventilations here the steering wheel which has like this wood trim here and actually that looks better than the fakey ones in the middle console and also in the door so that looks way better of course plastic here and then the cruise control on the left and on the right side and on the other side there are also some buttons and i am thinking that are for the radio unfortunately we need the code for the radio we don't have the code so we cannot activate it but i am quite sure that is for the radio stations and stuff like that and of course this is like also adjustable but only in the height not like in the in the deep and then we have uh, up here we have the hazard lights then we are looking on the very very classic gauges uh, we have our temperature coolant temperature we have our gas tank and then we have our speedometer 
in miles and in kilometers, which is quite nice, convenient. Where are the keys? We have a little bit of like a board computer. On the left, we have our uh, automatic system, of course, and then the overall mileage. And then on the right, we have uh, like this board computer, which is saying the door is open, uh, go to the maintenance, what is your average fuel consumption, the tire pressure, stuff like that. And also a common issue, what, uh, what the owner said me that there is like this uh, warning message, tire, tire pressure low and actually you can check the tire pressures and all four tires are okay and he said the tire pressure warning is for the spare tire which is below the car so um, yeah so we have uh, like here this warning message coming to the funny part we have uh, up here the CD system with navigation for 20 to, I don't know 23 or so that is that is like 2003 which is okay uh, I saw that in a manual it looks antiquated and with a disc and mp3 already discs so we can read here but overall the design it's it's quite nice it's it's okay yeah of course not super modern like this touches this uh, this place but it's okay and then in this part here we have our climate control and then some yeah, additional nice features. We have then here the C-T button. T, I am understanding it's for temperature and C, I have no idea. But when we are clicking on that button, we see the direction. So north, south, east, west and the temperature. And then we have a reset, step and menu button. And that button, the, the three buttons are for the small board computer to navigate them. The down part here is when it's dark, these buttons are not illuminated. So we have to know them by memory. And they are not so logical, or I, for my understanding, they are not so logical. So maybe you're clicking the wrong button and then you're like in the menu for changing the language. Can happen. In the middle, we have the light adjustments. Yeah, when we are like fully loaded, we have to adjust the lights, of course. And when we have some space here, I don't know, maybe the higher trims have additional buttons here we don't have them here we have a uh, climate control which is working after 20 years uh, heated seats traction control also some left spaces here blind spots then we have on the right our uh, parking sensors which are unfortunately not working and in the middle here is the very very interesting part we have an adjustment for our gas throttle and the brake pedal. So for the pedals, we have an adjustment for the driver. So if you have like a little bit shorter legs or longer legs, you can adjust the pedals, whoever that needs. Then of course, a little bit of like a storage department here and then two 12 volt outlets there. And then we have also our shifter with a little bit of wood trim which is also looking nice, a little bit of grippiness here and here some additional space for coins or whatever. Then some uh, yeah, aluminum plastic thingy, which is looking okay. And then the four wheel drive, which is actually only like for, you know, when you're really in hard terrain, you can pull it and then your own four wheel drives. It's called Quadra Drive 2. Cup holders, an additional, some coin storage here. Looks like people back then like to storage coins everywhere. Down below, we have some storage department here also, quite deep. It's good with some net here and additional coin storages. I have no idea, pen holder, something like that. We have, of course, our glove department, which is okay. Uh, some storage here, nothing special. Sun visor with light, with mirror for passenger and driver, which is quite good. Then we have some storage here for our sunglasses. 
and then the steering of the automatic sunroof. So overall, I like the sitting position. I like, actually, I like to drive it. Let's go for a test drive. So I said 200,000 kilometers and we see like our wonderful noise, which is making noises whenever it can, when we are opening the door. Of course, it's not working because we have the key right now. But if I would put out the key, forget the lights on, which are manually here, it's still uh, making these noises or if we do anything else. So as I said, used car and uh, we experienced some issues already besides this parking sensors are on the mechanical side and this is actually the drive shaft. So the owner said to me the dry shaft is making some noises. Maybe we will hear it when we are driving. Maybe it's a common issue. If anybody of you know, then let me know in the comment section. And actually beside that, he was also saying that if we are turning the wheel fully on and it's also making some noises but you know there are like these pumps and actually you shouldn't move it like fully to that side so i didn't saw that didn't experience that but yeah the the shaft currently we are not hearing because we are driving very slow but when we are speed up we will hear that back in the days mercedes engines had the opinion to be like bulletproof and super solid actually that one is making especially when it's cold it i think maybe it's, it has something to do with the injectors it's idling a little bit rough so maybe there is also something and besides that what can i tell you i mean uh, let's check out our amazing board computer and it says average fuel consumption on 100 kilometers is 10 point nine liters of diesel on 100 kilometers and in my opinion that's a lot it's really a lot and a little bit too much for a diesel engine when it would be like around eight seven that would be nice but 11 is way too high i don't know if that has something particularly with that card too with the injector so maybe something is dirty but on the first meters of the Grand Cherokee you feel like really this rigidity like the stiffness and I am not sure but I'm saying that car is based on the frame you feel really like you feel that but it's so rough maybe it's not so comfortable but we are talking also about and jeep yeah so and jeep has this image of all terrain doesn't matter if off-road on road so it has to be a little bit rigid and a little bit rough and of course the grand cherokee has like that in his heritage uh, now we are feeling and now we are hearing that on asphalt we are driving like 40 kilometers an hour Yeah, maybe you hear it oh you know like all the ventilation window is down and you are cruising that you can't hear the radio so you are hearing that it's a little bit annoying but of i am pretty sure it's fixable without any uh, big issues but i have to really admit that i like the car i really like the car i like this rigidity i like this you know higher sitting position the steering is actually quite nice the automatic is also doing their job of course i mean it's, it's it's not a sports car it's not like super stiff and we can really go fast into corners but i like it i like it that it's, it's so rigid and you can really you can transport some some stuff there i mean i'm transporting now a bike and uh the steering is good quite not too, not too direct, not too indirect, not too flimsy. So this is quite okay. I mean, the brakes are braking. The the car is driving. It, it's quite loaded. We we have a lot of uh, convenient stuff, which is very nice. I mean, the climate control is, I think, the biggest thing here. 
and uh, in the winter with the heated seat and power uh, heated mirrors the the mirror is also like dimming down automatically like uh, if somebody from behind is like flashing you and this is nice and i really like the car and i mean for 20 years it's super nice and you get like currently of course every used car prices went up uh, but you get such a car which i would say it's on the upper edge like you get it for like 5000 euro so if you like such a rigid car i mean rust wise on a deck lid i i saw like some rust but besides that i didn't saw any rust at all and if you're loving like in a little bit more hilly thing you have all-wheel drive system here and I am thinking of like buying for such a car for myself. I really, really like that. I would probably you go for a V8, not the diesel, because just of the sound. Yeah. It's a really nice car. We will go a little bit faster now. I will close the window. Um, yeah, but the downside is really this 11 kilometers. I mean, I was driving uh, also on the Autobahn without any speed limit you can check out the pov video of that we are now pedal to a metal yeah 80 and 100 so it has it has a little bit of power and of course in the pov video i'm driving top speed so you can check that out in the info box and yeah besides that if you have any uh, questions comments feel free and i hope you enjoyed this episode of apex race with the jeep grand cherokee if so uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up and see you in the next episode have fun stay safe and bye